When you acquire one of these older Mercedes diesels, the first thing you want to do is a physical exam on the engine. I cannot stress this enough. You cannot believe how many emails I've received over the years where people have gotten one of these old diesels and they've spent hundreds of dollars fixing things like brakes, tires, batteries, shocks, only to find out very soon that the engine's worn out. So the very first thing is make sure this engine's healthy because if it's not, it may not be worth fixing the car. Now, one of the things you want to do right off the bat is to pull the valve cover off and do a valve adjustment, inspect the camshaft, and check internal engine timing. Because a lot of times these old diesels will have a lot of stretch in the timing chain. And contrary to what you may have heard on the internet, like people say, well, these timing chains never break. Well, I've known of three of them that have broken. And when a timing chain breaks in one of these diesels, it will destroy the engine. So just mark my word, warning to the wise, check for timing chain stretch. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about inspecting the camshaft. I'll just briefly reference a valve adjustment that's not going to be part of this video, but I will put the links to the resources for more information at the end of this video in the show more below. But I am going to go step by step and show you how you can check the internal engine timing, which is going to give you a very good idea whether or not your chain is stretched beyond limits. To check your internal engine timing, of course you're going to have to remove the valve cover. Once you get the valve cover off, before you do anything else, you should inspect the camshaft, particularly the ends of the lobes for scoring or wear. This is very common on these older diesels if the oil changes have been neglected. So you can run your fingernail across the edge, the top of each of these lobes, and make sure you don't have any excessive scoring. This camshaft looks really good. In fact, this whole engine uh, looks like it's been very well maintained. Nice clean uh, cylinder head here, no sludge buildup. And I'm looking at a really beautiful camshaft and rocker arms. And of course, if you haven't done it recently, you want to do a valve adjustment. You're going to need the special wrenches that we make here in my own shop. And you want to set all these valves to the proper clearances. This is something that should be done every 12,000 miles, folks. A lot of people neglect these valve adjustments on these old diesels. Okay, now that the camshaft's been inspected, let's take a look at this chain. Now, if the chain is severely stretched, you'll be able to lift it right off the sprocket here. See this? I'm pulling on this chain, and it's very tight. And I've seen chains so loose that you can actually pick up the links right here at the top of the sprocket and lift it up an eighth of an inch. And that's probably a sure sign that checking the timing is going to show that your chain is stretched indeed. Okay, now to check the timing, you need to remove the fan from the water pump because you're going to have to get a socket and a long ratchet or breaker bar on that front bolt on the pulley. Let me show you how I've set this up and then I'm going to show you how I rotate the engine over by hand to bring the timing marks up and see how many degrees difference between camshaft mark and the mark down here on the crankshaft. In preparation for this, I highly recommend that you come down here on this counterbalance and clean it off. A lot of times this will be so rusty that you can hardly even read these numbers. And you can see here there's marks. Most of these easels have marks at every 5 degrees. Here you can see 10, 20, 30. So you want to be able to see those marks clearly. And the top dead center mark is right there, right where my finger is pointing. So that's really important that you be able to see those clearly when you rotate the engine over and check internal engine timing. On most of these engines, you're going to need a 27 millimeter or an inch and 1 16th inch socket. The deep socket works very well. In fact, this is the exact same socket that you would use for removing and replacing the fuel injectors on these older diesels. Now remember, you're only going to rotate the engine in a clockwise rotation. Now this gets a little tricky when you're doing this yourself because you're going to have to do it from this position because I've got to be able to look right here on the back side of this sprocket on the camshaft to see these marks. You're also going to pay attention to these two lobes on the front number one cylinder. They should both be up. If one's opening a valve, you're not coming up on compression stroke. You need to be coming up on compression stroke. Currently it's showing about 40 degrees and I'm going to start rotating the engine clockwise as viewed from the front very, very slowly. And I'm going to keep track of the marks down here 
So I don't go past zero. As I approach 10, at this point, my attention is going to come up to the two marks here. One is on this front cam tower. The other mark is ground into the washer on the back of the sprocket. I'm not going to worry about the marks down here now. Now I'm just going to turn it until these two marks line up perfectly. Here you can see those two marks I'm talking about. You see the little raised nipple here on this cam tower and that notch in the washer. I'm going to rotate it very slowly. Now it is a little bit easier to have either the glow plugs or the fuel injectors out so you're not fighting compression. So this is going to come up pretty smooth and I'm going to keep rotating it until that pointer is right in the middle of that notch right there. Okay, let's stop. Now let's go down and take a look at the marks on the counterbalance. Okay, that's zero right there. There's the pointer. You want to be on this side of the pointer. Notice I'm at about one and a half or two degrees. Now in my book, that's good. And let's talk about that in a little more detail. But at least at this point, I'm not concerned about chain stretch or timing on this particular engine. Now once you complete the inspection that I've shown you earlier in this video, the next thing you'll want to do is a compression test. You don't want to do a compression test before you do a valve adjustment and there's no sense in doing a compression test if your cam timing is way off. But you need to do a compression test to finalize your diagnosis of just how healthy your engine is. Now I do have what is called a physical exam kit on my website which includes a compression tester, the tools to adjust your valves, also to get the injectors out and inspect the fuel injectors. So this is something you might want to consider if you have newly acquired an old diesel or you've owned one and haven't done this inspection before. Now I mentioned earlier in this video that two degrees was okay. If you look at all the literature that Mercedes has produced, there's really no set chain stretch specification where they say you should change the timing chain. There's some clues, but what I've learned, if it's under three degrees, you probably do not need to be concerned. You no, do not even need to be concerned about getting an offset Woodruff key and readjusting that timing marks on the camshaft. Mine's at two degrees. I'm happy with that, particularly for an old 240D like this. But if your chain gets stretched enough to where it's six degrees, you need to be concerned. Not necessarily that the chain's about ready to break, but it will affect your injection pump timing because when the chain stretches, not only does it affect the camshaft timing, it also affects the injection pump or fuel delivery timing to the fuel injector. So that's real critical. If you're losing power, you're smoking a lot, it may be due to chain stretch and it may be due to incorrect injection pump timing. In a separate video on my website, I'm going to show how I do this procedure. I also have a manual which walks you through the procedure of checking your fuel injection pump timing. If you're interested in that, you'd be sure and visit my website. I'm happy with this one. As a final warning, if you find out that you have eight to 10 degrees of timing chain stretch, in other words, if you've set those two marks up here, lined up and you look down there and you're eight to 10 degrees off, I highly recommend that you change the chain immediately, <laughs> okay? Just chain your timing chain and always change the tensioner at the same time.